Hey everyone, happy Tuesday. Uh, today I'm recording one of my first official trade recap videos. So right now, today it is November 30th, Tuesday. It's about um, 1 p.m. for San Diego time. And I wanna do a trade recap about um, the one trade that I took today that ran 20R during the London session. Now there's plenty of other opportunities when you trade multiple sessions. You know, I there was a pretty killer trade that did happen during New York, but I usually pick one session that I'm going to be trading that day. And once I hit my target, I'll just turn off the screen because for me, it's, you know, making money is good, but I also want the freedom. And, you know, last night I was trading until 3 a.m. And so I wanted to make sure that I got some good sleep around 1 a.m. I shut off the computer and I hit my target. So I'm going to show you this really quickly. This is my notion. This is where I track my daily trades that I take. As you can see, I don't trade every single day. I'll trade two to three days a week. Depends on if I hit my target. You can see last week, you know, on Tuesday, I hit my target pretty well. It was a really good week. So I decided to take off Wednesday through Friday. This week, I started off a little early. There was a lot of news events. Um, this week is going to be pretty hectic because it is the end of November and the start of December. So... You know, we're having a lot of news events coming out. We have specifically this week, like unemployment, GDP, FOMC, OPEC. So I try to stay away from a lot of those events. I did see that, you know, Sunday and Monday, we're going to be a little bit cleaner. And as we go into the end of the week and Friday, it's going to get pretty crazy. So we're going to go ahead and do a recap of the trade that I took. This one was a 19 R trade. Um, you're going to see what I took. How, how I took it and what I was thinking as we went through this trade. So let's get into it. Let's do this. Here we go. All right. So um, just taking a look at Euro US dollar. This is the weekly chart. You can kind of see that, you know, just if we get a rough look at it, we reacted to this supply, this supply zone here. We came down, bounced back up, mitigated the levels in here, and we broke this level of structure here basically telling us that confirming a bearish downtrend we had an area of here of interest an area here of interest that two demand zones that we could be seeing responsible for pullbacks on the weekly we did react to this zone here as you can see this consolidation we did kind of wick down and this is obviously a weekly candle and we've kind of pushed up a little bit so my trade is going to be right around here if we look on a daily time frame really quickly, you can see that we had, well, we have multiple points of interest on this, on this massive leg here that we're kind of uh, eyeing. If we just take a look here, obviously when I trade for me, I always look at the most recent um, supplier demand zones on the higher time frame. To me, these are not relevant until we figure out what's going to happen with this first one. So this was the only one of interest for me today. So here on this time frame on the daily, we reacted we to this uh, to a consolidation here that was within the weekly time frame. We won't spend too much on this. Let's just you know frame out this zone here, as you can kind of just see. So the idea was, are we going to see? Um, a reaction to this daily level that was going to create another just a mitigation and then create new lows targeting this low or were we going to see a breakout and possibly a retracement to something up here or even higher right so that was just you know to give you an idea a brief on the daily time frame so if we now move to the four hour and so this is what my four hour time frame look like you can see that we're kind of the same zones we have this four hour, it's a supply zone. It's not very clear, it's kind of like a range. This mitigated something in here, right? This created the drop, broke structure, came down. We had a pause in the market. You can see that this doji candle right here, let's uh, zoom in a little bit so it's more clear. You might be watching on a phone. Here we swept the highs of, of uh, this range and then we proceeded to break structure with quite a lot of momentum. As you can see here that we left some imbalances. So that could be something at play that we're looking for. Um, and, you know, once price broke out of here. 
Then you can see we came down, we had a pause here. Then from here, what happened is this was a quick pullback, mitigated something in here, price reacted well, followed bearish trend, broke down, wicked. You know, when we see a, you know, a massive wick like this, sometimes we think we're going to start going long. So obviously our first thought was, well, what's going to happen to this zone and then maybe here? As you can see, we reacted here right about to the equilibrium, the 50% level of this. So all we did was we mitigated. So this is just a um, confirmation that, you know, we mitigated this level. So it's no longer of interest. Um, here you can see we had a four hour doji candle. A lot of times four hour dojis hold very well. Um, but obviously, you know, you can't always assume something. The market will do whatever it wants to do. There was news today. And so, you know, usually red, um, red folders or red flag news events will target, you know, higher time frame supply and demand zones for liquidation. But obviously we did not know that it would, we would just you know, we adapt and we react to what the market is telling us at that moment. So this was an area that I was very much eyeing this four hour zone. Uh, you can see that, you know, this wick down here from this four hour reacted well, created a lot of momentum, left some imbalance here, and then just caused another massive wick, liquidated um, this wick or this market structure from here, broke, pulled up. This area was something that I was watching. This was something that was kind of interesting that I was looking for. But then the reality is that while this swept, you know, something on the four hour in these areas, more than anything, the true break of structure that was confirmed with a closure, candle closure, was this zone right here. And so this was a zone that I was eyeing. You can see that this actually became a flip, which we'll go over in a minute. Price from here broke structure downside, confirmed with the candle closure, and continued. Basically, what happened here is this wick mitigated the level in here just a little bit below equilibrium. You know, and it ranged. It didn't show too much power here. Market was kind of slow as this was happening, and then it just sold off. Confirmed break of structure. We have these lows, and now the question is, what is going to happen next? Are we going to mitigate something in here and continue um, a bearish um, trend? Or were we going to break to the upside and mitigate something a little bit higher since we did come down to a weekly level, right? So usually we find reactions. We value higher time frame reactions more than lower time frame point of interests. So obviously a weekly candle is going to come in with a lot more power than a daily or a four hour. So we're always going to prioritize the higher time frame. That's why it's important to take a look at those. Most people are only going to look at the four hour when they're trading or the one hour. And that's kind of foolish because no matter what your trading plan is, if you don't understand what's happening on a higher time frame, you're going to miss the best trades. And you're just not going to understand what exactly is happening. We knew price was going to come into the, the weekly. It came into that weekly level. So now we're looking for what? A potential change in character, right? So, you know, this was the low. Then this was, sorry, this was the, what do you call it? The lower high, right? Then we made a lower low lower high, lower low, lower high, higher low, right? So at this point, we failed to break this low. So potentially, what are we expecting? We could potentially see some long. Now, is the long for mitigation of some level above? Or is it going to create an actual change of um, character? And as you know, is it going to switch um, structure from moving bearish to bullish? And that's what happens here. So on the four hour, you know, we're just going to take a look at it here and then break it down more easily. Price pushed up to this four hour um, doji candle that was responsible for this most recent break of structure. You can see it reacted. It wicked into it, closed beneath that zone. And then what happened here is we came back with this little wick and then price powered through on the four hour and broke out. So officially, this is now a flip zone. So this was a supply failure and price reacted in this demand zone was responsible from here to here was responsible for breaking this level. So now what can we expect? Price is going to push out as long as it doesn't tap supply before um, it mitigates. You know, we're still showing that demands in control in here. There's not really too much. Um, the, the levels we're paying attention to would be more up here and up here. 
So therefore, when price pulled back from here, it was not because supply is in control, but it was just simply because um, demand needs more liquidity and needs to mitigate this flip zone. So from here, what we can see is price came down, mitigated, respected the low, and powered through, created a lot more liquidity, generated a lot more orders, and came, broke this four hour high, and now basically gave us confirmation of a change of character to bullish until what are we targeting? The next, the four hour high. So now we're gonna turn on our medium time frame analysis um, setup. So we're gonna see on, let's look on the 15 minute. It's usually what we like. So I'm gonna turn off the medium time frame really quick just so you can see what price looks like at this flip zone. So we're gonna take a look at the flip zone first because um, that's going to be, let's look at, first let's turn this on, see what can we, I guess I can only turn on lower time frame. So I can show you when I took my trades, right? So this was Sunday. So on, what was this, Friday? On Friday, we created the flip. On Sunday, price opened and mitigated that zone. We got a confirmation on, today is what? Last night, and this is when I kind of took my trade. So we're going to uh, go more in depth on this. So here we are on the 15 minute. This was the flip zone right here. So what we when we trade flips, what we usually do in this case, let me turn on this. We usually look for an entry off the reaction, off the extreme on the reaction, right? So price reacted, pushed down, came back up, respected this level, pushed down here after it reacted again, and then this was the level responsible for um, for breaking out. So what we would look for, and this was from last week, right? So last week level, we would look for an entry at this level. Why? Because price reacted, pulled back. We're looking for an extreme that was responsible for the failure of supply now, right? So this was, this was um, the reaction initially that pushed back, created this level. Price came back up into this zone, did not make a new high, respected this level, but basically showed us some sort of bullish intention. I was making um, higher lows. And here when we have this inside bar, this was the moment at which we had an explosion of price come into the market, very strong closes on the 15 minute that just basically liquidated the 15 minute um, or the four hour supply because this was a four hour flip, confirmed our flip. And then what we were basically looking for was, and this was like on Friday, so what we were looking for on Sunday and Monday was a confirmation um, and a mitigation of this 15 minute flip zone. And you could have taken a trade from here and this would have been a pretty amazing trade. Now I'm gonna show you which one I took because I did take trades here and I did have a really good um, day. As you can see, I had 18R and 5R on Mon on Sunday, so I did trade here, um, but the trade recap is going to be specifically um, on what I traded today, which is Monday. So it's just a single trade, make it easier, right? But this would have been your indication that for sure we are going to hold the demand zone and push higher, targeting the four hour, right? So let's take a look. Where am I? Where's my focus here? All right, so that was one idea of a flip, right? So if we flipped there. We're going to take a look more in depth here. One thing that I've noticed is that when price is, and it's not always the case, but one thing that I've noticed is when Asia um, basically key, creates like very corrective, um, let's say bullish structure like this, and London does not um, liquidate the Asian session, a lot of times, a lot of times, not every time, but a lot of times New York will be responsible for the liquidation. And in this case, you know, there was news today. And so, you know, that's what could have happened with this candle. So anyways, um, Asia basically created a continuation off of this flip zone that we had on the four hour um, that we refined down to a 15 minute demand zone. So you can see that price is very casually um, making higher highs, taking out um, lower time frame levels. So because this was a four hour um, supply to demand flip, 
we know that that's going to hold better than 15 minute zones. So this one had to go price did react here and then pushed up, broke that level and provided a flip entry in here, which, you know, we could have taken from this level to this level and gone a continuation. But for me, um, where was my trade? I wasn't interested on that because we still had this level and I was still potentially looking for maybe there's going to be shorts, right? You never know. So I waited for price to basically flip in here. So we're going to take a look. This was the extreme of the 15 minute leg that came down to con confirm, to mitigate and basically hold the demand. So this was um, basically what you would call a weak high because it did not break this structure. So because this is a weak high and we know that this is strong lows because they're holding and we're seeing that this is basically from here we took out these equal relatively equal highs and basically initiated um, more bullish intention here. We can expect that this one's not going to hold right and this one would. So what we're going to look at is this 15 minute extreme. We're going to go down to the one minute. So try not to get lost. All right. Let's go back to here and this is how I took my entry. So the first thing that I was looking for is what's price going to do up here. So this was the initial reaction price came down. Let's zoom in a little bit more clean. We're going to turn on our entries. All right. So here what we can see is, well, correct. Um, Price flipped here, so this was a sell to buy flip. Supply zone came, broke some structure, created um, equal lows, which tells me there's liquidity here and we potentially could be targeting more to the downside. Price came up and flipped here. So what happens now is this is a flip. So now we have this um, sell to buy flip. Price came in, mitigated the 15 minute extreme on this, on this uh, short leg that just mitigated the four hour and created a 15 minute refined flip, right? So when price created this level, I was starting to look for shorts because we reacted well. This was about like what, 25% or so, a little bit above. This mitigated on the one minute time frame and order block that was all the way to the left of that 15 minute of this 15 minute supply zone. Here what we have is I was looking for flips. So price from this low, this high, pulled back here, created equal lows liquidated came in and then what we have the reaction that came down and cr created a sweep of these lows was holding this demand as soon as we actually tapped the wick what happened here is we could see that we have a um, another sweep sweep up and this was basically a confirmation of my entry the moment that price broke down and took out this level so now we have a change of character and we also have a flip so a chotch flip right so my entry was now going to be on here the moment this broke down this was the low and it did not really come to a demand zone so i saw that well potentially yeah, as always we're going to mitigate this level so this would be a pretty safe trade to get into um even though it's counter trend you know on it's counter trend to the four hour but it's pro trend on the 15 minute right so um this was my one minute flip entry my stop loss was the top of this wick and she was at the um, at the open. It was 1.7. So, you know, sometimes I like to enter at the equilibrium, but because this was still less than two pips, I had no problem entering a 1.7. This targeting, I was targeting the, I was targeting these equal lows for potential liquidation because I knew there was another order block just below this area. What ended up happening was that it did not happen Price did liquidate this flip zone, and it could be because, well, we really didn't um, sweep anything too much. I mean, we did sweep this reaction, but that was pretty much it. Um, so what price ended up having to do is sweep here. So I did take partials on this place. When price came down, it broke this level. When it breaks one minute structure for me, it means that I moved my price to break even in many cases. So at this point, it was moved to break even. Price came down here, reacted pushed up. The moment I saw the sweep, I was like, okay, well, it looks like this is going to continue. Um, price broke down here. And the moment that price basically broke this structure, now I'm moving from break even to, let's say the highs up here. 
price came down broke um, and then what do I see that it's holding the demand and at this point I'm like what could mitigate this level um, but then what we see is price started um, creating more uh, bullish corrective structure upward so this trade was a break even there was no loss here um, I wouldn't even count the little profit that it took because it just wasn't really worth it. So the moment that happened, no loss there. Um, what we can see is price continued, took out this level, took out this um, initial reaction. So what do we have is more confirmation that there's um, bullish intention here. And now what we're looking for is a flip within um, a deeper mitigation of the 15 minute supply. So now what we see is um, this was the area where initially price reacted to. You can see that we came in here, created um, this um, pullback on the one minute. Then we broke up here, took out this level here, which was just basically a another one minute order block on the 15 minute. Price pulled back. This would have been a potential entry, but at this point, we still do not have um, failure of the supply. So the way that I like to trade is if I have a supply zone, I like to take flips, right? And here you can have my flip definition. I look for a point of interest reaction. I'm looking for it to form an extreme and then create a failure of the point of interest. And then I enter on the mitigation of that extreme. So let's break this down. We enter into a deeper mitigation. Price pulls back, basically um, mitigates this zone here price with power explodes up and makes this 15 minute supply fail. So at this point we have the reaction, we have the point of failure and as price comes back down you can see that this down candle right here caused a sweep and a mitigation of this other one minute time frame um, that was responsible for this push up. So in this case this was the extreme this could be considered a decisional point. You can see that, that um, this level was responsible for the liquidity that was swept here and then created this very um, high momentum exit out of the 15 minute supply. So now at this point, this 15 minute supply is invalidated and now we're confirmed looking for longs. We're starting a new supply chain. So now, previously when I was looking for shorts to come into a zone either here or here or here, I'm no longer looking for that because this supply flip, a sell to buy flip, supply to demand flip, whatever you want to call it, started a new, um, a new demand chain. So this new demand chain indicates that, well, if we enter here, this is going to be basically an extreme or decisional for a new leg up. So this is a very safe entry that you can take versus had I taken along somewhere in here, there's a high chance that this 15 minute reaction could have caused a, um, to get me to take it out of my, of my trade, that would not have been good. But every time we have a higher time frame flip, it gives us an opportunity for a new supply or a new demand chain to form. In this case, it was a new demand chain. So anyways, price broke out. I set my order here. You can see that this was a 1.9 pip stop. Um, very clean. I had my, uh, entry at the at the open and I had my stop loss at just exactly at um, the equal lows so that was about 1.9 pips um, sometimes I will take trades at equilibrium or at the 25% level this one moved to the 25% level the reason why I don't have an entry on a, on on a 25% or the 50 today is because I did notice last night that I was getting more reactions to the opens of the candles instead of um, instead of the middle or the equilibrium or the 25%. So you have to be adaptable to that. When you see reactions are happening more at the open for that specific day, um, for me, that's enough of a signal to, you know, set my trades at open. And thankfully it did because that means I don't miss really good trades, right? And it's still a two pip stop, which is nothing. And this is a one minute entry. So anyways, price comes to mitigate this level. And now what are we assuming? We're assuming a new demand chain is starting. We have mitigation of this one minute. This one mitigated this one minute. Now we're expecting another mitigation here for this to continue and to hold. So this demand zone needs to hold. And we're expecting what? The highs to be weak. And we're expecting the lows to be protected. 
So this confirmed entry, we were triggered at pretty much midnight um, San Diego time. And you can see here that price is pushing up. And I'm basically just trying to keep track of pullbacks. Price pulled up here. And at this point, you know, you can see that we have an imbalance here, an unmitigated zone. This was potential um, that I was looking for, secondary entry. Um, price pushed up here and actually took out this one minute high. So the moment we took out this high, what was the move responsible for that? This one. So this um, push down and sweep of this range created as was responsible as the origin for this new um, new high. So at this point, this would have been a great place to do a re-entry. Now, I did not set one at this level because I wasn't sure if price could come back to mitigate this level, but this would have been a great um, secondary entry. Price did mitigate and very quickly came up and took out that new high and just continued it, you know, pushed itself up very correctively. It was um, no really pullbacks, took out this one hour um, supply zone, right? So this one hour supply zone, let's take a look at it really quickly. So this was our target. Our entry was at this flip. So from this flip to this four hour, while this one hour might have um, had a lot of smart money traders looking for shorts, it wasn't the real play because this one didn't actually mitigate anything. And so the supply chain is, you know, left behind. It's up here. So this one, although a lot of momentum came in, it looks like it's responsible for this breakdown. The reality is on the four hour, this was the point of interest. So, you know, taking profits at this level wouldn't have been a bad idea, but it would have been foolish to look for shorts in this zone when we have the four hour that had truly mitigated um, previous structure. And as well on the one hour, you can see that this one, this candle wick swept and mitigated this level. So, you know, we could have played that and said, okay, well, to confirm, let's do mitigated supply. This one mitigated this level and respected the highs. Price pushed down. You can see an imbalance here on the hour. You can see price did come up here and pushed up and broke down. But the reality is that we're looking for a mitigation of this supply or a liquidation, right? Because at the same time, what do we have? Relatively equal highs. Let's, you know, gives us a target to look for liquidations. Hold on, let me pause and plug in the charger. All right, we're plugged in, we're charging now. So anyways, we're probably looking for either the respect the four hour or more than likely some sort of liquidation um, simply because we do have some equal levels here and well, we do have another point of interest a little bit higher up, right? So remember, we are reacting to the, we're reacting to the weekly demand zone. So a weekly demand zone is way more is going to have more weight and hold more power than four hour levels right and so you can see how massive this wick down was just to get more liquidity to make the continuation upward so more than likely we're going to see the four hour levels are not going to hold very well right but we're still looking for reactions to confirm because you know we like to be safe with our trades so let's go back where we are let me go to the one minute here we are. Anyways, so we continue. We basically take out this one hour supply zone, make it um, basically, you know, not important. Here what we can see is we're making relatively equal highs, but we still have yet to mitigate the four hour. So more than anything, what's happening here is this is a form of inducement or um, buildup of liquidity. And the reason why we're doing that is to basically um, create a lot of liquidity that we are just going to use to take out um, during this mitigation process. Um, more than likely, what that's going to signal is that price is going to liquidate these zones. And instead of continue, it's going to pull back. And the reason why is, well, look how corrective this structure is. This is all going to have to get taken out. The question is, when is it going to get taken out, right? Would it happen after a reaction to this four hour or are we going to see a continuation or a sweep of the four hour and then take it out? So the safest way for me to have traded, um, I only was trading for what? Um, 
from midnight until I guess I was up a little later than I felt to almost 3 a.m. for my take profit. Um, now from here to here was only the difference of half a pip, but the reality is at 127, um, you could have taken profit on this trade. Took a couple out other hours just before it actually broke through. I had it set on take profit. I went to sleep. Um, you can see how clean this was. Mitigation, breaking the highs. At this point, very corrective, impulsive push upward. Liquidated the one hour. Did not even provide any reaction or flip for this trade. Just continued to mitigate and then push up. Here you can see that we had what a reaction to something in here. Price pushed out. Well, here we can see some structure kind of changing. Some people probably here would have started looking for shorts, but it was still a little early since we did not mitigate and we were now creating relatively equal levels. So a lot of people probably would have taken that short. Um, but the reality is, you know, don't take get out of your trades early. Wait till they hit your take profit or they hit their stop loss. So in this case, that was a recap of this you know 19.84 r trade that i took it lasted about one hour for me um before you know i went to bed and as you can see it went hit take profit that was very clean 37.7 pips 1.9 pips take profit um these texts really quick just because i guess i didn't address them this was a flip 15 minute flip continuation toward the four hour zone so if you remember um, what did we do here on the four hour zone here? We created the flip Remember this was the entry at the extreme And you can see price continued up high That's it pretty much um, That was my London trading session as you can see what happened was we did move up to sweep it and We would have found another entry over here for shorts What I probably would have looked for here was and this was when I was sleeping, right? So this was at almost 7 a.m. my time 7 30 a.m. my time so I, did, I wasn't up at this time now had I traded it I would have had a pretty good uh, reward that would have been amazing here you can see some corrective structure moving upward then what do we have we're basically looking for demands to fail and we're looking for supply to hold so we would probably be looking for a shift this liquidation on a higher time frame probably looks like a wick as it should so here you can kind of see it's just a bunch of wicks. Gives us the indication that we probably want to trade away from that. Um, typically that's what happens. So let's take a look to see what we could have gone in here, just in case you're curious, right? So let's say if we were looking for here, we were look let's say we'd be looking for supply to fail. Here you can see what happens. We have a um, breakout, a wick to take out that level. What we could have done at that moment is said, okay, well, the first thing is that we're looking for is, okay, if we're going to get a change of character, the low has to go, right? So we'd be looking for this low to go as an indication. Now, the moment that this broke and took out that level, what do we have? This one is basically giving us break of structure, even if it's on the one minute, showing us that we're pushing upward. So what should we have happen? The low that created that move up and that break should be respected. So when do we have our actual change of character? We have it on the one minute right here. So while many people would have not understood what's happening, this would have been a very clean entry. So from this low to this high to this low to this high liquidated. So that was a sweep, right? But it is, you know, proof of a change of character that could be initiating here after this liquidation. Price came down, broke this level. At this point, what are we looking for? We're immediately looking for shorts. Now we don't have confirmation necessarily that we will officially go short until what happens until we have another break of structure because we like double confirmations but at this moment you could have been kind of i mean it would have been a little crazy because we you know we've been going you know long so much and we just broke out and invalidated a four hour level so we wouldn't have been necessarily looking for a a short so quickly right um, but you could have had an entry here and targeted you know all the way down to the bottom which would have been you know to what I would have had to take out that structure I mean it would have been crazy so anyways before we before I just you know drag that to a random place I'm gonna show you what would have been the responsible trade in this case obviously we're doing this with hindsight because I did not actually trade this but it's very clear 
and this is a good lesson for flips and chaches. So here we broke this structure, and what did we do? So let's mark this off right here. That was basically showing us what? A start of a supply chain. Now what are we expecting? Well, we did take out this previous high. As long as this reaction does not take out that high and it respects that level, what do we have? We now have a supply holding, right? Those, what happened is we created equal highs and price, what happened? Broke down. So the reaction that caused a push up into this zone was later taken out. The moment that this um, impulsive move downward happened, we would have immediately started to look for shorts. And the reason why is, well, this initial push up that swept the highs was now broken. And also we have one, two levels that were broken within the zone. So this would have been the original demand zone that we were waiting to hold. Now we did not get a flip in this case. Price just melted straight through. So there was no flip inside of here. Um, but where we did get some where we did get a flip was here. So this was remember this is corrective uh, in its nature. So we have demand, 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 right? So in this case, what happened? Price reacted here, pushed up. And then what happens broke out this broke this level. So some people would have been looking for two entries. We could have looked for an entry in here, which you can see did not work out. Or we could have looked for an entry at where the extreme, we always like to take entries at extremes. So we would have looked for the buy before the sell. And this would have been the buy before the sell. This was just the wick um, on the one minute, not necessarily something you want to take into account. You could have though for the equal highs, but it would have been irrelevant. We would have once again been looking for entries at the open. As we mentioned earlier, this would have been our trade. So move this down here. Clean this up a little bit. This would have been the trade that we were looking for. This one had a four pip stop. Um, we really could not have narrowed it down too much unless Let's see if the equilibrium would have had anything. I like to take trades that are only um, two pips or so. Let's look at this entry, the 25%. Extend it. So 25% would be a potential good one. That probably I would have liked more three pip. I don't like to go beyond three um, pip stops. So let's say we pick the three pip stop. We took the 25%. That would have been our entry. Now, what are we doing? We reacted to what? A four hour level. So what are we going to be targeting? Well, what we could have had happen. Let's take a look. Let's turn off these other things that are kind of blocking up our view here. Well, what we could have looked for is this demand zone to have been mitigated. This is kind of the area I would have been looking for. The other thing is, well, Previously, what did we have? If this four hour demand broke structure, it is a strong level. So what we can expect is that this four hour demand or supply zone, sorry, supply zone, mitigation of a supply zone, it's a part of the supply chain. This move was responsible for creating a new low. So what we can expect is we're going to liquidate um, any, um, any most recent leg. So this would be the most recent leg up. It was very smooth very corrective, provided almost no pullbacks. So this would have been a wonderful target for us to have. And you know, it would have been pretty clear. So let's just say if we drag this from here to here, this is the right, that's the wrong one. Where is it? Let's go to the 15, here we are. We would have targeted this flip and um, this most recent leg up would have been what's targeted. So we ended up liquidating that. So let's take a look at what it looks like on here. That would have been a 40 to one, 40 R risk to reward. And that would have been pretty smooth. Let's lock it in so we can take a better look. Here we are. That would have been pretty smooth. So that's the idea behind the way that we trade. We only take confirmation entries. Risk entries are kind of foolish to be taking I don't care who you are, risk entries are not gonna work as often as 
um, double confirmations or confirmation entries. We like to enter with flips. We like to make sure that price does confirm a change of character. Here you can see that this would have been an amazing trade that we could have caught. Um, once again, start of a supply, uh, start of a demand chain here. Very corrective structure, looking to take this out potentially. If we start getting change of characters, we swept the four hour level. So a risk entry would have just been taken out like nothing, it would have been worth nothing here. Um, what do we have? Um, this demand, demand here that you know didn't create a new high, this one did. Push price up, price held. So we're looking for demand to fail because demand was confirmed. The moment that we had this break of structure on the one minute, where we're looking for the demand to hold, price broke down. Usually we get pullbacks, so we wouldn't have thought necessarily anything of it. Price came back up. What happens? We respected the supply. We respected the equal highs. We did create some liquidity there that some people might have been looking for continuations long. But what happened? Price pulled down, broke, showed us its bearish intention by breaking one level of structure, one level of structure here, and you know, officially breaking the demand zone responsible for the sweep up. At that moment, we would have been looking for short. We did get a reaction here. Here was a potential flip. You could have taken one entry here. Assuming that that would have been a place, you would have definitely got taken out. The reality is price usually will mitigate the extremes on one minute time frames um, when they're unmitigated. So this was all unmitigated. Price came in here, failed to you know meet the imbalance in here and touch, it didn't even tap the bottom of the range. The bottom of the range would have been here. Price came in, did just that, and created a beautiful one to 40 R trade. That would have been wonderful if we got, right? So I hope you like this video. I try to keep them not too long, but obviously it, you know, it takes a while to make a good trade recap. So this was a good recap of uh, going over my one to, what was it? one to almost 20 R. This was a good lesson on flips. We had two really good ones, um, two really good opportunities that we could have had today. This one was great. I did take this one and the one during New York session that provided an even greater return. Um, but I hope that this lesson was good. If you like this, you know, leave me a comment. This is my second YouTube video. I'll make more. I record all of my trades. Um, as you can see here, you know, I record every trade that I take that's, you know, especially the winners here because I want to be able to keep track of, you know, what I'm doing right. Um, so, you know, I'll post more as as they come. So let me know if you like this video. Enjoy. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. I hope you um, learned something today and have a nice day.